looking a bit ominous outside today. I think it's going to absolutely belt it down all day. I've come in to the pub, this is Monday morning. So what I usually do on a Monday, I'm normally first here. Uh, there's very often a veg delivery, so I'll bring that indoors, particularly in weather like this. And then I'll do a walk around the pub every Monday morning. Just cast my eye across things, make sure that there's nothing that needs my immediate attention. No repairs, no breakages, anything like that. I'll have a look in the communications book, make sure that uh, everyone's talking to each other if they're on different shifts. And then once I'm satisfied that we're good to go in here, we'll be going back into the brewery. And today we're going to be canning a heck of a lot more beer. So let me take you off the tripod and we'll go and do our walk. So one of the first things I do is check the fridge temperatures. So I know Tom and Matt do this on a daily basis, but I like to come in and just check them in the morning when I know that they've been sat stationary all morning. Uh, so yeah, looking at the fridge temps there, that's okay. This is on a defrost, but we can just simply pop it open and have a look that it's all nice and neat inside. Everything's frozen. There is an internal thermometer to go in here as well, but I think at the minute, Stuart might be using it. Yeah, he is. Just in the bottle fridge to check that. So we can see the bottle fridge is happy. So uh, just finish off my walk around the kitchen. Here's the comms book that we have filled in pretty much every day. Tom's also got his diary. Let me check over here. Sinks all nice and clean. The glass washer cleaned out, nice and sparkly, shiny ready for today's service everything put away I've got these out this morning so you can't blame anybody for that and then we'll come through to the front of house and we'll just have a quick check some people got tabs up here look scampi fries, Paige has had some scampi fries and Tom's had a few beers by the looks of it uh, but everything looks pretty good I like to just also have a look at the pumps Make sure we've got no drips in the drip trays. As you can see, the staff have got their line cleaning indicators on here so they know what's going on. And of course, these beers are what we've got on tap at the minute. A nice Salopian Oracle there. And then usually what I'll do, is just have a quick look. Bookings for today, not many, but I'm sure that'll pick up throughout the day. Or oh, fingers crossed it will. Let's just have a little bit of a walk around. Everything looks good. Fridge on, four degrees. That's looking fine. We've got hand gel, sanitizer, surface spray. So the staff last night when they closed down have had a good clean up. We've got the poppy appeal on the corner over here, which we tend to do every year. There's last year's, funnily enough. And then uh, this here, is from our local uh, allotment friend, Mr. Spider-Man, and uh, he often brings us some little goodies that Tom might want to use in the kitchen or I might actually take home and cook with. Big, big fan of the parsnips. And then if we just have a walk around the back, you can see that we've got the COVID secure poster up in the right place, all that kind of stuff. Fire alarms looking good. Just double check that this fire door is indeed closed that should have been checked last night and it looks like it was having a quick look into the restaurant area all the screens are up still so we remain covid secure in terms of barriers between groups of people because we can't sit them two meters apart here so we obviously just have a physical barrier to separate the two guests looking out the window you can see the top of the marquee, it is a huge marquee by the way, it absolutely covers the whole of the beer garden. I think it's something like 18 metres by 9 or something like that, or 24 metres by 9, massive. Right, I'm satisfied that up here is alright. In order for me to do the toilet checks however, I do have to put the toilet light on. So uh, we'll just flick that on there and then we'll go downstairs and check the toilets 
It's very rare that I find a surprise down here, but sometimes it has happened on occasion. Just mainly a bit of tissue on the floor or something like that. So let's have a look down here. Right, there we go. Two sets of tables down here. Everything looks good. Got a couple of tables there. Table for a couple of guests there. And if we go into the ladies first, let's have a look. No surprises. There we go. Oh, it looks a bit of a mess. Right, that's definitely ready for emptying. That's been neglected somewhat. Let's have a look in here. That's looking a little bit better, but there's still tissue on the floor. Oh, and that's locked. So I can only assume that somebody's set that to out of order for some reason. No flush on the top. There we go. So I'll come in and I'll repair that. But nobody's indicated that to me. So how am I to know? And we've got the wet floor sign under there. So it just needs a bit of a sweep up in here. Whoever's opening this morning will do that. Then into the gents. Right, I can see already we've got a light bulb out. Yep, so there's a light bulb out up here. Well, it's looking very dim. Uh, something wrong with that. But other than that, apart from a little bit of tissue on the floor, it's looking not too bad at all. Bit of tissue there as well. But we don't have a bin, so... I'm not surprised really, maybe we should get a little bin in there. And then, I've already been into the marquee this morning, but I'll just show you what the crack is. You can see that we've got plenty of space outside. Really quite socially distanced tables, look at the distance between them two. Definitely two metres. So, uh, everything looks good outside. Everything looks good inside. Little bit of paintwork to be repaired down there. Look, a bit of rising damp. That's something that this place suffers from down here in this. Like this would effectively downstairs be like a kind of a cellar. Because we are subterranean, look, if you look there. There's the road and we've just come upstairs. So all this section here, the toilets are all underground in that part. But yeah, I'm very happy with that, folks. So I'm just going to cut and we'll go and get ourselves in the brewery and start with today's proper jobs. So here we are, boys and girls. The canning set up, kind of uh, ready to go. It's basically where we left it last, last Wednesday, I think it was. So we canned a load of vacant last week. Um, here's the seamer. Here's the can filler, which is still working perfectly. And we can see we've got sat in a little bit of sanitising solution there. A few cans still sat floating in the sanitizer, But all ready to go. Label machine set up for proof of concept. And I think that's what we're going to be canning today, actually. So we've got proof of concept in, uh, in FV7. That's going to come out and go into can. We've also got some stout and some pale ale. The stout being over there, the pale being here. And this needs to go into can today, as well as doing some casking. So we've got a busy day. The reason I didn't work Thursday and Friday, and the reason that this plasterboard is out on the side here, is because we've, well I say we, Gemma and I, put a new kitchen in over the weekend. So. As many of you may know, we were meant to be moving house this year or at least uh, doing some major renovations to the place that we've got and then hopefully renting out our house while we move into a bigger one. But as it turns out with COVID, things haven't gone quite to plan. So instead, we're trying to make the place look a little bit more habitable and uh, that's involved putting a new kitchen in. Here's a little picture of what we've done so far. It's by no means finished. It's quite a small kitchen, but now we've made it a nice environment to be in. It's a massive improvement. So this plasterboard was uh, just for doing some boxing in of some ducting. Then over here, we've got all the spare timber and everything. So I'll probably put that plasterboard down there for now. And then this morning, we're gonna to have to go upstairs and have a look what 
we have in terms of orders because I imagine we're going to have to send quite a few cans out today. We're running very low on the coconut. That's the coconut there. We've got plum porter, porter, coconut, amber ale, proof of concept, vacant gesture. And then all these casks and kegs here are empty. All these casks here, yeah, empty. So they need to be washed. We had an issue last week with a cask washer as well, but it looks like it's been resolved. That looks like it's ready for changing. Can you see how all the uh, the caustic settled to the bottom? Very strange indeed. And another project is uh, the little toilet area over here in the brewery. It's about time that got sorted out. It's been literally at the back of the queue for terms of jobs, in terms of jobs to be completed. Someday we'll get round to it, but maybe not this week for sure. And then having a look over here, it would appear that, yeah, our CO2 is out. So we're going to have to change this cylinder. It comes on a Tuesday. We'll replace it with this big boy. But because we've got all beer in tanks, I've now set up this purge system. You'll see the pipes at the top of the tanks. So every few hours, each tank gets like a 10 second blast of CO2 to mainly, mainly for these ones, because I can't clamp the lids tight mainly to push out any ingress of oxygen, make sure we've got CO2 on the tanks all the time, making sure that any beer in tanks that are under storage conditions, like just sat here, look at four degrees, four, five degrees. There's another one sat at 4.4. This one sat at 4.3. They're all sat waiting to be packaged. The beer's all ready to go. It has been for a few days. But because we can't get round to everything all at the, the correct time, because we are pretty busy with a new canning operation being set up and the stuff going on at home, of course. What worries me is as the beer cools down to this storage temperature, obviously it contracts and it also is capable of absorbing more gases from the headspace. And if all the CO2 in the headspace there has been absorbed into the beer, then naturally it's going to draw in air which has oxygen in it to fill or replace the void that's been created by the absorption of those gases. So by providing CO2 to the top, I think in the cask world they call these aspirators. So that's basically what they are, but it's kind of a homemade version. That means that the beer will remain stable and under CO2 throughout the whole process, reducing any chance of oxidation, which is exactly what we need. So there's a little bit of an explanation for you. What I'm going to do now is again, put the camera down and get geared up for a day of canning, casking, kegging, basically packaging. Uh, Kevin and Christian there, look. So we're canning. We've got Dominic in to help us. And uh, his job at the minute is to take the cans out of the rinse water, let them drain and then box them. Earning a bit of money during the half term break. And then, uh, well my job has been on the seamer. I don't think. Oh, I did manage to do it whilst um, whilst I'm filming. Then I wanted to get a shot of the filler doing its thing. It's been filling really consistently, so let's see if it proves me wrong while I've got the camera out. Oh, look at that! It really is working quite well. So we're going to carry on doing this. It's now three o'clock, and uh, well, we're. Uh, I wouldn't said quite at a thousand cans yet. How many do you think there is, Dom? Yeah. Probably about 700 plus there so far. Well, that's it, folks. We're finished. So, uh, before before we sign off, we've got a thousand cans of proof done today. Before we sign off, we'll just let you say hello to the dogs. 
There's the lunatic, oh my goodness. And there's old boy Chance having a good old itch in the miserable weather. So I'm just gonna get these on their leads, take them for a little walk, and uh, then upload this video for you to enjoy. So we'll see you on the next one, folks. Reggie, what are you eating? Oh, nice, it's got a stone. Anyway, cheers. All right, old timer. Yes, he is. Not you, you nutter. Oh, tomato. 